On a beautiful Saturday night in Atlanta, it's time for Braves baseball. Tonight from Turner Field, it's game two of our three-game set between the Braves and the Houston Astros. All year long, Braves baseball on Peachtree TV is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price, every day. And happy Saturday night, friends, with Tom Glavin and Joe Simpson. Chip Carey back here at Turner Field, where the Braves have a marvelous homestand working. They are 7-1 and one so far. And, fellas, a much-anticipated debut by one of the newest members of the Braves. Paul Mahalam makes the start tonight. Yeah, they'll turn the streak over to the newest of the Atlanta Braves pitchers. Paul Mahalam is 30 years old, and he knows how to pitch. And he is really on fire. This season, he's 9-6, and six, but check him out. Over his last seven games, 5-0, and oh, he's not allowed more than one run in any of those seven starts. He's been outstanding. Plus, he's pitched real well here at Turner Field. The Braves know all about Paul Mahalam. He's been very tough against them, including this year when he shut him out for seven innings at Wrigley Field. And, and as far as Paul Mahalam, what to expect out of him, kind of your typical left-handed pitcher. He's a control pitcher, throws all of his pitches at pretty much any time, fastball, sinker, slider, changeup, curveball. His job or his philosophy is to try to use both sides of the plate and try and change speeds as much as he can. As Warren Spahn used to say, hitting is timing and pitching is upsetting that timing. That's what Paul Mulholland's game plan is all about. Joe, I think Tom read his own scouting report. Sounds a lot like his <laughs> pitching repertoire in what will be a Hall of Fame career for Tom Glavin, our partner tonight. Speaking of future Hall of Famers, Chipper Jones. His last year as a member of the Braves, he's off to a rip-roaring start, and he's done some damage against the Strohs. We'll talk about that right after this. Set for game three of the Braves Astros series tonight here at Turner Field. Chip, Joe, and Tom back upstairs in the broadcast booth where, as we all know, just a few short years ago, Tommy, this was one of the best rivalries in baseball. The Braves and Astros met so many times in playoff competition. Not surprisingly, Chipper Jones played a very large part for this Atlanta ball club. Yeah, he certainly did, and he certainly has over the years. And no surprise, he's had a, a heck of a career against the Houston Astros. In 67 games, or his last 67 games, he's hitting 351. Current nine-game hitting streak against 
against Houston in which he's hitting 417. And overall in 127 career games, excuse me, against the Astros, he's hitting 321. And no surprise, Joe, it was these very same Astros that he got his season started up to start up with this year. Remember, he was on the disabled list coming off of, out of spring training, and his first game was in Houston in front of his folks. Went deep in his very first game, had a couple of hits, but didn't stop there. Last night, a big two-run double that got the Braves on the board and helped pace them to that 4-1 to win last night. So Houston has always been a team that Chipper Jones liked to do some kicking Astros type thing. I like the segue. We'll leave it at that. We're getting ready for baseball on a beautiful night in Atlanta. Game two of our series. Braves have a rip-roaring homestand working. They'll try to make it 8-1 and with a win tonight. Game two's lineups and first pitch coming up right after this. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, by AT&T, by Delta Airlines, and by Ford. After a rainy afternoon for much of the day in Metro Atlanta, it's turned out to be arguably, fellas, the most comfortable night for baseball in Atlanta in a couple of weeks. It's a beautiful night for Paul Mulholland to make his debut for Atlanta, and this is who he'll face, the Houston Astros, who are 35 and 72 for the season. Jose Altuve leads off. Marwin Gonzalez and Ben Francisco follow him in order. Brett Wallace is their cleanup man. Justin Maxwell, former national, is in center field. Matt Downs at third. Chris Snyder, the catcher, and Lucas Harrell having a good year for an Astros team that's way, way under 500. And they'll be facing the new left-hander, Paul Mahalam, making his 21st start on the year. You see there he's 9-6 and six on the year. 12 and 6 in his career against the Astros and as we talked about in the open been very hot lately his last seven starts 5 and 0 oh, and you can really take it back back to earlier in the year as well you take his first two starts out out of the equation which were really ugly his last 18 starts 9 and 4 with a just over a 3 ERA so he's been throwing the ball well good sized guy too, 6 2 220 30 years old lives now in Hattiesburg Mississippi out of Mississippi State his four keys to success tonight make yourself at home because I think he might be here a while. Braves also have an option on him for next year. And Paul Mulholland pitching great baseball. So his first game here at Turner Field. And he's very Tim Hudson like. As Tom explained during our opening comments. He works both sides of the plate. Changes speeds beautifully and has a good curveball. And when he's on you know right away. When he's not you also know right away. And here's the defense that will work behind Mulholland tonight. 
Prado Bourne and Jason Hayward left to right in the outfield. The Braves defense up the middle has been good with Giannis and Ugla. Chipper and Freddie Freeman are the cornermen. And Brian McCann works behind the plates. Jim Reynolds has the plate. He'll call balls and strikes tonight. James Hoy is at first. Jim Joyce, the umpire at second. Mike DeMiro, the umpire at third. As we said, a very comfortable night. Gentle breeze blowing from right to left. Only 84 degrees. And the forecast is for mostly cloudy skies, but very comfortable weather expected tonight and again here tomorrow afternoon. And Paul Mahalam's first pitch is a brave, is a called strike. Jose Altuve is the pint sized second baseman for the Astros, but he is having a good year. A 300 average, five homers, 29 knocked in. He's bringing a seven game hit streak into tonight's play. Mahalam pitched against the Astros a little over a month ago in Chicago and came within two outs of a four hit complete game shutout. He did work eight and a third, walked only one, struck out six in a four to nothing win. One of the things he does that has always grabbed my attention, Tom, is when he starts after he kicks and steps, it's like he cuts his stride off real short, which makes him come, I guess, over the top and help him keep the ball down. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, there's not one set way to do things as we talk about both pitching and hitting, but yeah, he gets to that point, collects himself, and then gets things going towards home plate in a hurry, and like I say, really gets gets on top of that ball, and that's where he gets his movement from. There's that seven game streak for Altuve. And that's upstairs to even the count. One area too where Houston has struggled and there are a lot of them this season make no doubt about that. They have not done good work against left handed pitching as a team. Brad Mills ball club hitting just 207 against Southpaws this season. But Altuve. Has not been part of that problem. He's at 351 this year against lefties. Keep an eye on this kid. So he's the only thing keeping him above the Mendoza line against left handers. And he loses Altuve, a leadoff walk. Marwin Gonzalez is the Houston shortstop. He was 0 for 4 last night. Switch hitter, a much weaker hitter from the right side as far as the average concern. 261 overall, 179 as a righty. Can play chipper. Ugla the turn. Double play. This was a really sweet turn by Chipper because he threw the ball from where he fielded it. He didn't have to stand up and get on top of it and made a perfect feed to Ugla. Nicely done. And Ben Francisco bats with the bases empty. He's playing right field tonight. And nothing in two. As you 
see that's part of Paul Mahalam's success. He's always one of those guys who gets a lot of ground balls. He's among the league leaders every year and fewest home runs allowed. Tough to elevate anything on him. Yeah, it does a really good job of being down on the bottom portion of the strike zone when he goes when he does throw a ball high for the most part. It's with a purpose to where it's up out of the zone where, where the hitters either going to chase it or they can't do anything with it. A couple other notes from Mahalam when we saw him with the Cubs on July 4th he pitched in this ballpark. Since his rookie season Paul Mahalam has the fourth worst run support per nine innings of any starter in baseball. And he's never had a winning season in the major leagues with a minimum of seven starts. But remember that's. A product of some of the clubs he was pitching for the Cubs and the Pirates. He's got a chance to have a winning year this year and he's off to a good start. With a scoreless top of the first inning. He looks for some run support from the Braves who start play tonight two games behind the Washington Nationals born Prado and Hayward one two and three Chipper Jones and Freddie Freeman swinging hot bats McCann Ugla Janish and Mahalam hits ninth. He'll be facing right hander Lucas Harrell. Making his 22nd start on the year eight and seven four point oh three and a ground ball machine when he's got things going. He's been a real find for them after they got him for on waivers last July from the White Sox, July of 2011. Combined last year in Triple A for the White Sox, and then after he joined the Astros, Triple A at their franchise in Oklahoma City, he went 12 and 5 combined. The White Sox let him go. I already like him because he likes to go fast. Say he pitches a lot like his teammate, former teammate Mark Burley. Get it and go back to work. There's a fly ball to right center. Francisco will stagger and make the play. Wow. Almost a big mistake there. Let's take a look at the Ford Keys for. Lucas Harrell one might be better communication in the outfield but really it's shining light. They've had such a miserable year but he is a shining light with an eight and seven record on a team that has a miserable record. He's got a four pitch assortment. He's supposed to be kind of a free spirit and a go get him type attitude. Our first look at him and I'm anxious to see this guy pitch since he's having such a good year. Harrell this year by himself has accounted for almost 23 percent of Houston's wins. They've won 35 as a club. He's won eight. A 
highest this season is the Mets R. A. Dickey, who's won 14 of the Mets 52 games. That's roughly 27 percent of the total New York victories. And there's one of those ground balls. Down to third. And Wallace handles at first base for the second out. And that uh, win percentage list is our Academy Sports and Outdoor Leaderboard. Pretty good names there. Like I say, 20 for Lucas Harold, almost 23% of Houston's wins, and it's pretty impressive for a kid that's in his first, really his first full year in the major leagues and still trying to get his feet on the ground. Number one and number three are most impressive to me because Dickey and Jared Weaver are on good teams and they've got a large percentage of wins on good teams. Way outside to Jason Hayward, one ball, one strike. There's a shot in the right center field. That's going to get down. Nice job by Maxwell to cut it off. Jason's going to try for two, and he'll slide in safely with a double. Graves had six hits last night, and five of them were doubles. So why not start off with your first hit, another extra base hit? Initially, I didn't think he was going to cut that ball off, and, and really didn't matter to Jason. He had his eye on a double from the minute he got out of the batter's box. Well, how about a two-out hit from Chipper? He's knocked in 47 men. One ball, no strikes. We are now in August and coming down the home stretch for Chipper's career, you're beginning to see a lot of flash light, flash bulbs go off on every at bat here at Turner Field. Snyder with the stop. And Harold is missed with three in a row to Chipper Jones. Two on, two out. This plays right into Freddie Freeman's hands, fellas, for here he is again, a chance to drive in some runs with two down. Something he's done an awful lot this year. Yeah, kind of the kind of the double-edged sword. You don't want to, you know, he obviously pitched carefully to Chipper and didn't care that he walked him with a base open and it being Chipper Jones and all, but like I say, the, the downside of that is Guy on deck with a little less name recognition has done really well in these situations for the Braves. 31 two out RBIs. That's the fourth highest total in baseball. Freddie's knocked in 65 in total this year. This guy's got some good sinking action though on that 93 fastball. Good for Freddie to lay off that pitch. Got to make him bring it up a little bit. Was up but off the plate. And all of a sudden, Harold can't find the strike zone. Two balls, no strikes. His last start came against Pittsburgh on the 29th of July, and he beat him 9 to 5. Obviously, got a lot of runs to work with. He only pitched into the sixth inning, five and two thirds, but just gave up two hit, or excuse me, two runs. There's the line. Three walks, five strikeouts, but it took him a lot of pitches. That 
pushed him over the 500 mark at eight and seven. Line toward left. Leaping grab by Martinez. That ball was rising. How about that outfield play for the Astros this inning? He gads. <laughs> Brave strand two in the first, but we remain scoreless. you in part by Hyundai, by the Home Depot, and by Georgia Power. Beautiful night in Atlanta, and we finished our first inning of game two of the series. The Astros back up there against Paul Mahalam. And the inning starts with Brett Wallace, then Maxwell, then Martinez. So Paul got that first inning with a new team out of the way and off we go smooth sailing. Swing and a miss by Brett Wallace hitting 320 for the year. 16 hits for the season four of them though home runs. Joe, all we need on this guy's back is a four in front of that seven, and we'd be you know, someone very familiar. It's funny, I was just thinking the same thing in a way that he does have a seven on there, so that almost qualifies. I'll let him use it for a little while. Two balls, two strikes. There's his second strikeout as a brave. He gets Wallace swinging to start the second inning. It's that little sinker down in the zone, outside corner, and he's uh, been hitting that one pretty well so far here early on in the game. If he's consistently on that spot, it's going to be a long night for the Astros. I would say that's where he's been locked in for the last seven starts. And while he was pitching for the Cubs and playing in the Central Division, you think, okay, maybe he's going to beat Houston a couple of times. Well, yeah, I mean, he got a win against them, but in this run of 5 0, oh, he beat the Braves, he beat the Pirates, and he beat Arizona. Three clubs that have playoff hopes. 
again pitching for a Cubs team that's 43 and 61. Nine walks and four of those were in one start. There's a looping line drive by Maxwell into left. That's the first Houston hit. Georgia Power customers can take advantage of Georgia Power's refrigerator recycling program with free pickup for your second working refrigerator or freezer. To schedule your free refrigerator pickup or to learn if you qualify, go to georgiapower.com slash refrigerator. Left fielder J.D. Martinez bats. One for four and had an RBI last night. Oh, was Tim Hudson good in game one? I, uh, I would have to say yes, he was. Very good. Especially after weathering the storm in the first inning, getting through that. His 100th win as a Brave and his 11th victory this season. Fly ball center field, Mike DeBorn. Sets up and makes the grab. No advance by Maxwell. Two outs. Matt Downs is the Houston third baseman. And hitting 204 for the season. Runner goes, got a good jump. The throw to second will be late. And Maxwell steals his third base of the campaign and is in scoring position with two outs. One on his first move, guessed right. Got some long strides, and that good jump outran anything Brian McCann could have done about it. High fly ball to left. Back goes Martin and a couple of steps shy of the fence hauls it in. And that retires the side. Downs gave it a ride, but the park big enough to hold it. And we remain scoreless in the second.
Joe Tomachip with you for game two of the Braves and Astros series. Atlanta having a terrific homestand. The Braves have won seven of the first eight games. Swept the Phillies. Took three out of four from Miami. Won last night. Trying to polish off Houston before we hit the road starting Monday night. One ball, one strike to Braves catcher Brian McCann. And this is an unusual defensive deployment for Brian. Not that having Altuve playing Rover out in shallow right field is anything new. Look how deep he is. But the fact that they don't have Gonzalez playing over in the hole. Harrell strikes out McCann with a fastball his first strike out of the game one out. Base is clear for Dan Ugla who had an RBI double last night part of his one for four game. Last three hits have all been RBI hits. So he's up to 52 for the year. Well, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but he's hitting three straight. I saw it right here in the notes. Yeah. That started August 1. Side ball three, three and one from Harold. Paul Janish is on deck. Paul Mahalam will follow. And now a three two pitch, first to new baseball. Marlins are in Washington tonight again, and in early action, they lead the Nationals 2 1 in the third inning. That's Mark Burley pitching for Miami tonight, Jordan Zimmerman for the Nationals. The Braves are two back at the start of tonight's play. I haven't seen the Nationals lineup, but I'm guessing Kurt Suzuki would be playing for Washington, acquired yesterday. Miami without Emilio Bonifacio, he hurt his thumb again and it might require surgery. And Ungla takes the call, third strike. That looked a little high to me. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's not the. They don't typically call fastballs up there, but yeah, that was. A little bit of a mistake that he got away with. He's trying to sweep that to the outside corner, but started it at Ugly and ended up on the inside corner. This guy's got a good arm, man. It's it's still amazing to me that the White Sox would just let this guy go for nothing. Waved him. And he's not throwing every pitch 94. He's backing off throwing a 92, then he'll go back to 94, back to 92. Giannis drives one to right. And that's playable for Francisco. And Atlanta's retired in order. And we move to the third inning. Still no score.
trivia time. And our trivia question sponsored by our friends at AT&T Uverse. Michael Bourne, 61 steals in 2009, ranked third all-time in Houston history. Who holds the Astros record for most steals in a single season? Hmm. Joe Morgan started with them, you know. Yep. For some reason, the name Enos Cabell popped into my head, but I don't think that's right. Joe Morgan might be the answer. But he remembers him with the Reds. So Chris Snyder leads off the third inning for Houston. He's their catcher hitting 182. Cesar Cedeno. Slow roller, and that's foul. How about Craig Biggio? Remember, he was a catcher and had a lot of speed. There's I'm drawing a blank at the moment, but there was a couple center fielders that played there during my playing days that I can't. I can't Steve Finley. Finley. But he, I don't think he was running as much then. There's How about Louis Gonzalez? In his early days? Probably not. There was a shortstop that played, spent some time with the Braves in his career. Sonny Jackson, back, way back, broke in with Houston. One ball, two strikes. Well, you know the answer is just one media guide away. Yes, it <laughs> is. <laughs> that is, we know, would constitute cheating. We won't do that. As Paul back to work. And just missed the point. Is it cheating if we just go to the section where they have the like opening day lineups from each year, just so you can get name references? That cheating? I don't want to speak for Gretchen, but I, I think the answer is probably pretty oh. much. Oh, she just chimed in and said yes. I was going to say no. <laughs> yeah, but we grade on a curve. She yeah. doesn't. <laughs> I hope you're right with Joe Moore. I mean, that was just well, not even any hesitation. Bang, Joe Morgan. That just sounds like the right answer. Full count to Snyder. Were they the Colt 45s back then, or were, were they the Astros? When Joe the four, uh, no, he was Astros. He was an Astro? Mm -hmm. And Boy. Snyder is struck out looking. He thought it might be low. Good pitch. Well, Jim Reynolds has got a big zone tonight. So a high strike called on Dan Ugla. I like it. Call strikes. And another one to Lucas Harrell, the pitcher. Eight hits in 40 at bats. Lucas is from a real good baseball town, Springfield, Missouri. Good youth programs. Produce a lot, a lot of uh, good high school players, college players. Was missed. Four strikeouts. 
Catch Chipper playing in some of his final games with the Chipper Jones four game plan. It includes tickets to four Friday games and a set of four Chipper Jones commemorative prints. And those are presented by SunTrust. Packages start at $71. So visit Braves.com slash Chipper or call 404-577-9100. Mahalam's strikeout high for the season is seven. He's done it twice. Once in six innings against Detroit. Got a no decision in that game. One at four to three. And two starts ago, seven strikeouts and in eight innings at Pittsburgh in a five to one win. Two and zero to Altuve. He fell behind early in the count, but drew a leadoff walk. He was erased on a nifty double play in the Houston first. Three and zero. Tuve has drawn both walks in the game, and here's Marwin Gonzalez. Is it tough throwing a strike to a guy that's 5'7", Tommy? I mean, it sounds like a silly question, but he's the smallest guy on the field. Well, I mean, he's theoretically he's got a smaller strike zone, so there's less to there's less to attack, and he can hit. So you don't want to just throw it down the middle. He's a threat to steal. He's sitting on 19 stolen bases, and he might be picked off. Freeman's throw will get him. Giannis with a nice pick and tag. And Mahalam's out of trouble in the third inning. He'll lead things off for the Braves as Atlanta looks to score the game's first run when we return. Brought to you in part by McDonald's, by the Georgia Lottery, by AT&T Uverse, and by Ram Trucks. Braves up for the bottom of the third inning. Still no score. Each team with one hit. And it's Paul Mahalam leading things off. Paul three for 39 at the plate. I mentioned earlier that Paul has not had a winning Major League season with a minimum of seven starts. Gretchen Caney did some math for us. The clubs that Paul Mahalam has pitched for in his big league career are a combined 200 games under 500. <laughs> Think about that. Tough to get many wins uh, yeah. in that atmosphere. And that's why 
Paul in a Braves uniform, Tommy, in this park with this offense and this defense, frankly, behind him, you figure he's got a chance to continue what's been a winning season in 2012. Well, I can promise you if he continues to keep pitching the way he has in his last seven starts, he's going to win a bunch of games. It's like Lucas Harrell's got a little something on his mind tonight, too, though. Good off speed pitch there. Harrell again, eight and seven for a club that's 35 and 72. As we told you, that's the sixth highest percentage of a team's wins in Major League Baseball this year. The all time highest percentage was Steve Carlton in 1972 with the Phillies. He won 27 games for a club that won 59 all year. I don't know if that'll ever be topped. I that's I, when I saw that I saw at the chip. I said that's one of those that'll never that won't be touched. That's a little low. The other names on that list. Dating back to 1900, Ed Walsh in 1908 won 40 of his team's 88. Jack Chesbro for the 1904 Yankees won 41 of 92 games. Noodles Han 22 of 52, and of course Cy Young 33 of 79. At third, Downs will take care of Michael Bourne, and that's out number two. They say Noodles Han could pitch just about every day. And Martin Prado will be the Atlanta hitter and the subject of our SunTrust solid performance. The Braves is a team 17 and 13 against the Central. But Martin providing a lot of the offense for Atlanta in those games. Drive into center. That's the second Braves hit. Greg Walker has said a lot, fellas, about this Braves offense. Facing sinker ballers, make them get the ball up. Harrell finally did on that pitch. Greg's done a great job with the hitters all year long. He's really put a game plan in everybody's head, you know, with whoever's pitching that day. Plan of attack for your first at bat. Jason Hayward doubled his first time up, and it was a laser. Toward Altuve at second, and that will retire the side. We head to the fourth inning. Good pitching tonight at Turner Field, and we have no score.
It's the fourth inning and we have no score. Harold and Mahalam pitching a beautiful game today and it's a quick turnaround. A 135 start tomorrow as we wrap up the series and the homestand and here are tomorrow afternoon's Chevron starting pitchers. Well the good thing is the Braves starting pitcher Chris Medlin's on a real good roll and won his first start. The bad news for Houston is that Bud Norris is not on one of those types of streaks. He's lost like seven in a row. And I'll verify that in one second. Paul Mahalam will start with Marwin Gonzalez. Yes, quick strike one. That is correct. He's lost seven in a row. Mahalam's fastball, and that was a changeup, but his fastball's good enough. That if you're thinking sinker sinker and looking away and trying to cover that outside corner you're going to get your bat sawed off. Because he can cut the ball in on you run it in on you or in on your shoe tops. Well, I think he's he's. Trying to get the hitters to think away 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 and then pick his spots where. Either locks guys up in for strike three or goes in there with a, a cutter or something to keep them honest and they can't put much on it. One and two to Gonzalez, a former Chicago Cub farmhand. Really had no place to play with young Starlin Castro holding forth at shortstop. So Gonzalez made his way to Houston where. He's got a chance to play every day. And he'll have a chance to sit down and admire the fifth Mahalam strikeout. And even when he gets you thinking away, there's that one that starts off the plate and you give up on it. Dips in there for strike three. Beauty. That, break one. Sorry, that breaking ball. That's another example of those lanes that we talk about. We're used to seeing that sinker starting out there and finishing on the plate, and then you see one out of his hand that's way off the plate. You think it's that sinker again. You give up, and oh nope, it's a backdoor breaking ball. Was it tough for you to pitch inside in the latter stages of your career, Tommy? Yeah, because I never, <laughs> I never did much of it for the first 16 years of it. And so what was the reason for the change? Well, they changed the strike zone. I mean, when with the uh, with the coming of Quest Tech, you know, when I came into the league, it was a, an east and west strike zone, very, very little up, very little below the knees. You expanded the plate east and west. And then with Quest Tech, it became on the plate, and you had to figure out how to use up and down. And you had to figure out how to get those 17 inches of the plate back, you know, and, and you do that by having to pitch inside more. So for me, it was just a matter of altering my game plan a little bit. Liner into center. Francisco is aboard for the first time. Hits are now even at two apiece. Delta Airlines is a proud sponsor of the Atlanta Braves. Can't wait to see our flight crew on the Delta Charter tomorrow evening when we head up to Philadelphia and then on to. New York to play the Mets. It's like Washington and Miami are all tied now. 3-3 three, three in the third. Mark Burley's had a couple of rough starts in a row, hadn't he? Grayson put him in a funk. Let's hope he snaps out of it with new life at Nationals Park for the first place Washington team. Here's Wallace. He struck out to start the second. That's rifled into center. Michael Bourne is there, however, makes the play. Francisco has to retreat and gets back to first safely.
Wallace hit that one right on the button. Nice to have a guy out there like Michael who can track it down. Just make it look like a routine out. Justin Maxwell has one of the two Houston hits that came in the second. He also stole a base and was left stranded by Martinez and Downs. Just a couple of years ago, this guy, when we went into Washington, he was thought of as their number one position player prospect. Center fielder could go get him, long rangy guy. Some pop in his bat. Then he suffered an injury, and I'm not sure he ever was able to return to the level they expected. That ball is launched deep left, and it is 2 0 Houston. Eleventh home run for Maxwell, and that was a no doubter. Too much of the plate. Yeah, I don't know if that was a cutter that didn't cut or a fastball that he just didn't get in far enough. That was a good swing right there. They so, got him on waivers from the Yankees. That is fair past Chipper. JD Martinez has an extra base hit. So a homer and a double with two outs in the Astros fourth inning. No stride just kind of waited on the pitch to get to him before he turned on it. And the two runs this inning the most Mahalam's allowed in any start in his last eight. Downs fly to left and fly to deep left. So he's 0 for 1. And a quick strike. Houston's lost its last six consecutive games in this ballpark. In fact, their last win at Turner Field was May 3rd, 2009. And a fly ball to left. Playable for Martin Prado, and that retires the side. Justin Maxwell hit a no doubt homer. He's two for two. And the Astros have drawn first blood. They're up to nothing. Here in the home half of the fourth inning and all season long Braves baseball on Peachtree TV is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors the right stuff the low price every day Joe Simpson Tom Glavin and Chip Carey tonight Lucas Harrell has been staked to an early lead on the Justin Maxwell two run homer and 
the Braves red hot winners of 19 of their last 25 games. That's our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot middle of the order really doing a number. And they need to do one again tonight. After the two run homer by Maxwell. The inning starts with Chipper Jones, then Freddie Freeman, then Brian McCann. Hey. Chipper's closing in on 2,700 Major League hits. He's 10 away from that mark. He's nine away from that mark. Leadoff single in the fourth. He didn't hit this ball that hard. He certainly hit it with some authority, but he put a lot of top spin on it. And there's no way Altuve, even on a three hopper there, could even come close to it because that ball was scooting through the infield. Freddie Freeman lined out to left his first time. Let's see if the second time through the order is more favorable for the Braves offense. Freddie has 10 hits on the homestand in 26 at bats. And is ahead 2 0. Chris Snyder is a veteran catcher back there tonight for the Astros. And it appears to me that one of his jobs might be to just get Harold to slow down a little bit. He's trying to be deliberate in his signs so that he's not working at a frantic pace. Chippers talked about that too, fellas. Early in your career, the game's going a million miles an hour, then it slows down. And then toward the end of your career, it really speeds up again. It yeah. applies for hitters. I guess it applies for pitchers too. Definitely for pitchers. I think that's the mistake that so many young pitchers make is when they start getting into trouble, they don't have the ability to slow things down. Hey. That was a good pitch, two and two. Is that high, high breaking ball call again. That looked like a, a hanging cutter. Tried it again, didn't get the call. Full count. Chipper's running. And a ground ball right side. Altuve will have only one play. It's to first. Braves stay out of a double play. And Ryan McCann represents the tying run with one out. The Astros last night 0 for 7 with men in scoring position, which is a continuation of their struggles in that department this year. Braves were only 2 for 13 and 0 for 1 tonight. One to Brian McCann. Brian struck out to start the Braves second. Another good thing for a hitter when you slow things down a little bit and take a few pitches, get better counts, is that you don't swing as at as many bad pitches. And I think that's helped Brian in his good stretch as much as anything. He's made his mechanical adjustments 
And because he's had a little success, then you're in no hurry to swing at the very first pitch if it's not something you were looking for or guessing. And by being relaxed and calm and wait for a good pitch, you get more success. Good count to hit. Three balls and a strike. Three one change up from this guy. And he is a rookie. He came in having thrown more innings than any other rookie in the National League at 127 and a third. And he's the only rookie with a complete game shutout. That came against the Padres June 27th, a six hitter. Is Brian swinging a maple bat? Looks like it. And silver M on the bat. Been swinging the ash bat for most of this homestand. And he will walk with one out. Second free pass issued by Harrell. And now Dan Uglas coming up. Sent it a lot this homestand. Sooner or later, some pitcher's going to pay. This would be a great spot for Dan to unload and turn this game into the Braves' favor. Well, we talked about how Mahalam doesn't give up many home runs, and he gave one up. This kid doesn't give up many either, so maybe it'll be one of those nights. Maybe he'll elevate that sinker a little bit or hang that cutter. Double play ball. Gonzalez to Altuve, and first in time retires the side. The Braves threaten, fail to score in the fourth, and we head to the fifth inning down 2 nothing to Lucas Harrell and the Astros. Justin Maxwell has hit a homer to account for all of tonight's scoring. And it's time for our McDonald's fans of the game. How about this sign? She picked our honeymoon at Turner Field on one lucky man. So as a result, you are the fan of the game from McDonald's. Good crowd here tonight. Paul Mahala making his Braves debut has pitched a pretty good game. He struck out five. He scattered four hits. But Maxwell has two of them, and one of those hits left the park deep to left. And a strike to Chris Snyder, the catcher. Eight, nine, and one up for Houston here in the fifth. Third had Snyder play perfectly. One out. Mm -hmm. 
Here's Harrell. He struck out his first and only time up. Much has been made, fellas, about this Houston ball club and their real bad season. 35 and 72. They're only 10 and 45 on the road. And they've got a chance at a record no club would want. Fewest ever is 17 road wins in a full season. And amazingly, they've been outscored by 142 runs away from Minute Maid Park. 142 run differential in 55 games. All I know is they've outscored the Braves two to nothing tonight. And that's what concerns me. Arrows down swinging. Holland has six strikeouts tonight. And 17's the record in a 162 game schedule. As far as the fewest road wins. So Brad Mills and his squad has some work to do. Let's do the Braves tonight. Here's Altuve. Mahalam's walked him twice. He's also picked him off. Giannis sliding stop. Pretty play. And three up, three down. That man's pretty smooth at short. Seven pitches for Mahalam in the fifth inning. Braves bats go to work. Down to zip. Royal. In part by Crown Royal, by Checkers, by Toyota, and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Paul Yanish is ready to go for the Braves in the fifth inning. Yanish, Mahalam, and Michael Bourne. Broken bat. Downs finds the baseball and retires Yanish on the inning's first pitch. The Braves are excited to bring legendary Southern Rockers Leonard Skinner to Turner Field for a free post game concert after the Saturday September 1st game against the Phillies. Visit Braves.com slash tickets or call 800 <laughs> Low roller toward first, and Wallace has that. Two outs on three pitches. We go back to the top of the order, and Michael Bourne.
Michael's a former Astro, and they've done real good work against him at the plate. Michael's one for 18 against Houston pitching. And 0 for 2 tonight. Well, he's gone into a little bit of a dry spell overall here recently. He's 5 for his last 32. And the best asset a guy like Michael has to avoid any long term slumps like that is the ability to bunt for a base hit. Two balls and a strike. It's average down under 290 for the first time in a long time. First time since Noodles Han was pitching in the major leagues, maybe. That's going way back. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. Now back to the screen. Still two and two. We had a picture of Noodles a minute ago. I don't know if we still have it. Check him out. Noodles Han. Pretty dapper in that jacket. I'll say. 33 game winner back in 1901. And Michael Bourne is down on strikes. Lucas Harrell, a free spirit, is free and easy so far through five. He leads the Braves 2 0. And back to the AT&T U-verse trivia question. Michael Bourne stole 61 bases in 2009. That was the third highest total for a season in Astros history. Who has their record for the most stolen bases in a campaign? Uh, hmm. This is why I wanted to look at the book because I don't know. I, I want to say there was a young that played the outfield center field. I, and I want to say Eric Young, but I don't think it's Eric Young. Was there Gerald? Was it Gerald Young? Or Might have been. Yeah. That's what I'm going with. That's. So maybe I'll only get half credit if I don't get it right, but I'm not 100% sure of his first name. Ground ball toward Yanish. Tricky hop. Throws on the run. Gets Gonzalez for the first out. I'm going to go with Biggio. Okay. I'm going to go off Sedano and You're go taking Biggio. my answer? Yep. I'll take Joe Morgan then. And the answer is... <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Way to go, Tommy G. And the only reason I remember that is because I played against him in the minor leagues. I remember... The things you remember for whatever reasons you remember I remember playing against him at the time the Astros were in Columbus Georgia and from being from the Northeast I thought oh my God this is the hottest place place on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> They've got another speedster in their system Delano DeShields Jr. Going into play yesterday he had 
Stolen 77 bases in the low minor leagues. He was a number one pick. And I'm sure the Astros are hoping he'll be a big part of their future in the next couple of seasons. You had an Eric Hart right though. Did I? Yeah. Second on their list is Eric Yelding. Eric Yelding. Okay. So Remember him? Yep. And then Born and Sedano were tied. And Sedano and Sedano and Sedano and Sedano. Six straight years, Sedano stole 50 or more. Kind of had to play that way in the old dome, didn't you? Mm -hmm. We're going to live with too many homers in that place. He was such a great player, Cesar Sedano. No, that old ballpark was. <laughs> that was the epitome of don't walk anybody. 2-0, just throw it belt high and see if they could hit it out of there. That's why I think when you look at uh, Francisco take a call third strike, giving Mahalam seven. You look at Jeff Bagwell's numbers and he'll be debated for Cooperstown. How many home runs did he lose by playing in that ballpark in his early days as an Astro? Uh, quite a few. He could get it out of there if he pulled the ball, but gap to gap. You, you better get every bit of it, and even then, you still might not get it out of there. Don Sutton pitched there for a time in his career, and he said he he tried to throw high fastballs in there and let guys try to hit it to center field. Swing as hard as you want, boys. Well, Jim Deshays more recently made a living there doing that. Can't do it in their new home, though, can you? No. <laughs> well, you can if you keep it in center field. Yeah. <laughs> But if you miss, <laughs> you'll get somebody hurt in the Crawford boxes. 0 oh 2 to Brett Wallace. A little crossfire action missed off the plate. Swing and a miss. Paul Mahalam's dealing, folks. That's eight strikeouts, and that's seven straight hitters retired. Inning. The Astros have scored first. They lead 2 0. And here's what's up next for the Braves our Jamison in upcoming schedule. But Norris and Chris Medlin round out the long homestand tomorrow and then on the road to Philadelphia. These starters for Philadelphia are tentative. Don't have that etched in stone yet. Worley, Hamels, and Kendrick. Sheets, Miner, and Hudson for the Braves. And the Braves have won six straight from the Phillies this year. Sweep in Philly and a sweep here. And a prominent fixture in that Philly offense won't be playing. Carlos Ruiz put on the disabled list today. A partial tear with plantar fasciitis. That's Jason Hayward, our Delta Airlines on deck batter. And regardless of the kind of year they're having, anytime you can go into a three-game series and miss Halliday and Lee, that's not a bad, not a bad setup. 
Meanwhile, Lucas Harrell's pitched a very impressive game. Looks like he's done all year long. He came in eight and seven. This is his 22nd start. And Gonzalez is short. Flips to first for the first out. He's done this all year long chip at home, but his best work has been in their home ballpark. The road starts have not been kind to him. Look at that. Two and six with a 571. And I was surprised to see that he's allowed 10 home runs this year, seven on the road. You'd think it'd be the other way around in their ballpark. Again, what a find. I mean, kid that can throw 94 and get the ball on the ground, they got for nothing. And might turn out to be a fixture in the rotation for the next several years if he can stay healthy. Well, either he was he wasn't doing this before, or somebody back where he came from is saying. We didn't see this when we had him. <laughs> he was a fourth round pick in 2004. Worked his way to the big leagues and then for whatever reason the White Sox last year put him on waivers in July. Downstairs three and one. For Seamer, but that's been his most effective fastball tonight. Two Seamer that kind of runs away. Like that. Five strikeouts for Harold, two quick outs in the sixth. That's just a good pitcher's pitch right there. That pitch might have run a touch off the plate when it was done, but. Stayed on the in the strike zone for a long, long time to Jason Hayward, and then just tailed off at the end and couldn't square it up. And when you're around the plate, you get the benefit of the call like that. Schiffer didn't like it and is down a strike. Braves had two on with two outs in the first. Freddie Freeman lined out to end that threat. They got a two out single in the third. They had first and second, one out in the fourth. Dan Ugla getting to a double play. Those are your offensive threats so far tonight for the Braves. His season high in strikeouts is nine. He's done it twice. Once against Cleveland in a loss and once in a no decision against Pittsburgh when only five innings. As we were talking about, he had three fly ball outs in the first two innings, and everything since then has been a ground out or a strikeout. So he's got that sinker ball working. The tying run comes to the plate again in the form of Freddie Freeman. Chippers walk twice, and he'll stand at first base. Another case where Snyder went out to talk to him and didn't jog back. He walked very slowly back to the plate. Ball one. Ball one strike. Harold at 92 pitches unofficially. And he 
misses high ball two. 121 has been his high this year. That was a couple starts ago against Cincinnati. You would think Brad Mills will ride him as long as he possibly can to stay out of that Houston pen, which has been a huge problem for them this year. The Astros bullpen has lost 23 games this year. They've allowed 352 hits, 113 walks, and 308 innings. That's a lot of base runners. But they might start stirring with a 3 1 count. Two walks in a row with two outs and four for the game. The bullpen will get busy as we enjoy our Home Depot tools from the dugout. And the tools from the dugout tonight for Brian McCann are a switch back to a maple bat. Something he has not been using lately. And for whatever reason he's got one in his hands now. Can got into a good pitch count or hitters count rather last time up before drawing a walk. He's very patient. And the way this guy's going, you need him to help you out a little bit, and he's trying. That's another mistake to see a lot of guys make, particularly young guys. You know, you, you start the inning, you go out of the dugout, and you're thinking, okay, here's what I got coming up. I get two outs and have Chipper coming up with two outs and nobody on. I've managed the inning well. Which he did, but unfortunately for him, there's three outs in the inning, and now you got Chipper in there with two outs and nobody on, and nibbled around with him, and then next thing you know, you got the tying run at the plate, and he wasn't able to get ready. And a called strike. I don't think it was that bad a pitch. It was just a late call. Yeah, it took took an extended look at it. Again, Houston with that modified defense for Brian. The outfield's very deep, and they play him to pull. Altuve, you see, the rover in shallow right. Snyder's done a really good job with this young pitcher tonight. And he's at his best here when the kid's in his most trouble. So this will be the hundredth pitch of the game. And McCann's worked an even count. Two balls, two strikes. Well, took a shot with the high fastball right there. See if he tries to get Brian to. Chase something down or down out of the zone now. He did. Now the advantage for the Braves. Chipper and Freddie can run with a 3 2 count. Now he's going to get picked off. Oh, with two outs and nobody on, he threw Michael Bourne a 3 2 changeup for strike three. He had the courage to throw it in that situation. You'd think he'd have the courage to throw it here. Go. Ground ball foul. Throwing a fastball. Yeah, I think he might be more concerned about issuing a third straight walk and being out of the ball game. So, whatever he feels most confident throwing a strike with right now is what he's going to use, no matter what Snyder puts down. Chipper at second, Freeman at first, three two to McCann. Just missed a double. We'll do it again. 
Well, not only is Altuve playing out in shallow right, but Brent Wallace is, as the pitch is being made, he's cheating over near the line a little bit too, trying to take that away. Pondering his options. Last night, Armando Galarraga walked seven. Tonight, Harrell's walked five. And the Braves have the bases loaded for Dan Ugla. Takes a strike. For all the raving we've done about Freddie Freeman and his ability to drive in two out runs, Dan second on the team in two out RBIs this year with 29. Line down the left field line and foul. 0 oh and 2. He just missed. I thought it might stay fair, but a little too much hook on it. And now he's got a battle behind Owen, too. Arrow thought he struck him out. One and two. Generally speaking, Dan's a good high fastball hitter, but lately he hasn't been able to catch up to that pitch for whatever reasons that he's battling right now. That guy went upstairs with a fastball, Harold, but just missed getting the call. This kid's had an impressive night, and personally, I like the fact that his manager's letting him stay in the game and learn how to pitch out of trouble. Well, this is how you learn how to do it. As much as you're trying to win ball games, you know, you're also trying to build some things for the future, and the only way you learn how to pitch in these situations is to be left in there to pitch, not only from the standpoint of what the situation is, but from the standpoint of how many pitches he's thrown. He's tired, he's... He's been working hard, and you got to learn how to get guys out when you're tired and you've been working hard. Line drive! Base hit! The game is tied at two. Dan Ugla with a big two out here. And on a one two count, too. That's what I loved about it. Fought it off, dumped it in there. 34th pitch of the inning. Dan ties it up. And now Janish could put the Braves ahead. And he takes a strike. All of this with two outs, three walks in a row, and then a hit on a one two count. New life for Atlanta. Last night, Dan got that double that was lost in the twilight. And it's hits like that and hits like the one tonight where you think, okay, that's what he needed to get going again. You know, fight one off. Just dump one in there for a big hit. 
That's a huge pick me up for a guy that's struggling. I think his last four hits have knocked in at least one run. Well, you know he's got a four game hitting streak. And it's and it's August. McCann at second represents the go ahead run. Two balls and a strike. Another broken back. And the throw to first retires Paul Yanish. Dan Ugla now with 31 two out RBIs. And a 1 2 count turns to gold for Atlanta. 2 2 as we head to the seventh. Hard blast that belongs to this man. Jason Maxwell back in the fourth inning with two out and a runner aboard. That's something right out over the plate and a no doubter to left field for his 11th homer of the year. That put the Astros on top two to nothing, but Dan Ugla just tied it up with a two run single in the bottom of the sixth. Mahalam's been dazzling tonight. He's retired seven straight, a season high eight strikeouts. And Dan Ugla's gotten him back in the game. 2 2 your score. And a long fly ball foul to the right side by Maxwell. That reminds me a little bit of Derek Bell. Uh huh. One of the killer bees mm -hmm. with Jeff Bagwell and Craig Biggio. And another high fly ball is belted deep left and long gone. Wow. Justin Maxwell has solved Paul Mahalam. Two homers, three hits, and the Astros are back in front. hanging curve there. This guy is bigger than he looks. He looks slender, kind of lean, but he's 6'5, 235. A little Jason Hayward like. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed he was that heavy. Second career multi homer game for Maxwell, and just like that, the Astros are back in front. Here's JD Martinez. He's doubled in two trips. To short. Yanish. Well now.
in their bios it usually gives a list of career bests and streaks and for Dustin Maxwell his career high in RBIs is four and he's done it three times coming into this season and the last time was at Turner Field in September of 2010. A bunt attempt. And it's a beauty. Matt Downs will reach. Well, he took a peek at Chipper when he got in the batter's box. Saw Chipper back and figured I'll take a shot at it and did what he had to do, just put it just far enough out of the reach of Mahalam where he couldn't make a play on it. So here's Chris Snyder, the catcher. He has struck out and he's grounded out. Holland's spot is due first when the Braves come up in the bottom of the inning. And we should see a double play. And we do. Lead off homer, though, by Mr. Maxwell. He's three for three. Two homers. And another long blast has put Houston back in front by a run. To the last of the seventh inning, Paul Mahala made his Braves debut tonight. That's part of our Crown Royal game summary. Justin Maxwell is the guy that's done the damage tonight, though, with two swings of the bat, two home runs to account for all three Houston runs, and they lead it. New pitcher, Fernando Rodriguez, makes his 48th appearance. A very high ERA, but it's a little bit better since the All Star break. It's at four even since the all star break and he's right out of strikeout per inning pitched last work three days ago at Milwaukee and gave up a run gave up a home run to Ryan Braun. He's a Texan out of El Paso. Was originally an 18th round pick by the Los Angeles Angels back in 2003. The Astros signed him as a minor league free agent in 2010. 47 games last year with Houston. And he will face Eric Hinsky, who's grabbed a bat and will hit for Paul Mahalam. Paul goes seven innings, gives up three runs, two homers. Both to Maxwell. Struck out a season high eight. And walked a couple of batters. So Hinsky will start it, then the top of the Braves order against Fernando Rodriguez.
Bigger shift on for Hinsky than for McCann. They do have the shortstop over on the first base side of second, as you see. High fly ball to right, but he got under it. Francisco is there. One out. I think the Braves are happy to have Lucas Harrell out of the ball game, even with his control difficulties. Now we're in this Astros bullpen that, as I said, has lost 23 of their 72 games this year. And there you see where they rank in Major League Baseball among relievers. Here's Michael, 0 for 3 tonight. After they traded Brett Myers really didn't leave him with anybody that has finished games too often except Cordero who they got in a trade and he's now on the DL. So the only guy active in their bullpen right now with a save is Xavier Cedeno who has won. Balls and a strike. I fly to left. But that's playable for JD Martinez. Mike Bourne's 0 for 4 tonight. And two are away in the seventh inning. Martina single in three trips. That was back in the third inning. Garen is up in the Braves pen. Looks like he'll be the next man to pitch. Nine o'clock in the East. Houston led 2 0 on a Justin Maxwell homer. Dan Ugla tied the game with a two strike, two out hit in the sixth. And Maxwell another homer in the seventh. That's where we stand now. 3 2 your score. Middle game of our three game weekend series. up over by the Braves on deck circle and Snyder will have a play and he will make it. Prado slams his bat breaks it and that retires the side of the seven three two as we head to the eighth.
like freeze cam. And the cold train. Nothing cold about these. These were hot. Coming off the bat of Justin Maxwell. A couple of homers tonight. Two run shot in the fourth and that one in the seventh after the Braves had tied it up. A long shot into the terrace level. Point of contact. Well out in front. Great leverage. Good extension. A couple of mistakes. Maybe the only two mistakes Paul really made all night. That was the Coors Light Peace Cam brought to you by Frostbrood Coors Light. So Paul Mulholland departs after seven innings of six hit three run baseball. Corey Guerin will answer the AT&T call to the bullpen and fellas Corey's pitched very very well and a lot more velocity than we've seen from him in outings past. This will be his sixth outing one and or oh and oh in the year. Pitched a couple times in the Miami series or three times in the Miami series pitched well. Four innings in that series gave up a couple hits and three strikeouts or four strikeouts over those outings so. Certainly threw the ball well against Miami and we'll look to continue that here against Houston. And Jordan Schaefer who pinch hits for Fernando Rodriguez. Jordan was one for four last night. And has really struggled with that batting average hitting 219. His on base percentage at 308. Was their leadoff man early this season, dropped to eighth in the batting order last night, and very late 0 and 2. Doubled up on the changeup but couldn't get Schaefer to go after that one. 90, 91, 92 fastball and 83 changeup. Good difference. And three in a row. Three hundred one at bats for Schaefer this year, one hundred one strikeouts. Well, he obviously needs to cut that down, but that's been a problem for him over his career. That ball centered and driven toward Michael Bourne. Got out. Jordan's hit the ball up the middle just about every time up in the series. He's the first out of the eighth inning. Now to the top of the order we go. Pair of walks and a ground out to short for Jose Altuve. He entered play tonight with a seven game hit streak on the line. Run game here in Atlanta, one run game in Washington. Marlins five, Nationals four. That game now in the seventh inning. Adam LaRoche has hit two homers in that game. He's been on fire. He has. The Braves are two behind Washington. Picked up a half game. Last night with Atlanta's win and the Nationals splitting their double header with Miami. Two and one. Stairs three and one.
Whoa, up and in. That almost hit Altuve. And he's aboard with his third walk of the night. And one of the keys for Corey since he came back is the fact that he hasn't walked anybody until now. Four innings coming into this outing with no walks and four strikeouts. And again, a fast runner at first. Altuve, 19 for 25 in stolen base attempts this season. And Marwin Gonzalez. Will bat from the left side, which is his strong side. He's 0 for 3 in the game. Called strike. into right center field that'll get down Michael Bourne will cut it off but not before Altuve reaches third base and Houston in business runners first and third with one out nice play by Bourne to get over there and make sure that ball didn't get through if it does it's another run Has turned a couple of double plays tonight. Corey could use a ground ball in this eighth inning. Francisco hit into one of them. I beg your pardon, it was Gonzalez that did. Two strikeouts, a single, and a run for the former Philly, now playing right field in Houston. And Luis Avilan and Chad Durbin begin to loosen. Well, lurking in this inning, too. Right here. Down one. A little easier to manufacture that one tying run if you need to, as opposed to two. Missed in twice with his fastball and come back with the breaking ball away for a strike. See if he goes back there for the strikeout or. He did go away and Francisco is struck out. Good call and a good pitch. So Garen retires two of the first four batters he sees. He allows a hit, a walk. 
does strike out Francisco. Freddy Gonzalez takes the ball from him. And Brett Wallace, the Houston first baseman, the next Astro coming up. Louis Avalon will grab the baseball and try to end the eighth inning. Two in the eighth inning, two on, two out. And Freddy Gonzalez makes the AT&T call to the bullpen, fellas, and sets up a lefty-lefty matchup with Brett Wallace. Luis Avalon's done a good job. Last couple of outings, he's given up some hits, gave up one unearned run to the, to the uh, Marlins on the 30th. But he's come in throwing strikes for the most part. Wallace has struck out twice in three trips. That was against Brave starter Paul Mahala. And he missed high. One ball, no strikes. Altuve walked. Gonzalez singled. There at the corners. In this Houston eighth. And a high fly to left. Martin turns the wrong way. Slowing now on the track. Makes the catch. And that retires the side. Houston strands a pair in the eighth inning. Three, four, five coming up for the Braves. Down a run to Houston. Down a run, 3-2. Well, 
Well, the game was briefly tied, and that was our Zaxby's indescribably good play. After three straight walks, Dan Ugla came in with came up with two outs and tied the game up back in the sixth inning. So Atlanta with a whole bunch of lefties coming up have to face a man that eats them alive. Wesley Wright is on for the second time in the series and for the 53rd time this year. Worked an inning in a third last night. Give up no hits but did walk about her struck out one. Ryan Bogusevic checks in to play right. Francisco's out of the game. And Jason Hayward starts things off. Jason doubled in the first inning, has grounded out and struck out since. Last time Houston won a game in this ballpark was August of 2009. Wesley Wright is the only Astro still playing for them that was here when that happened. Their pitching coach Doug Brocale was also here <laughs> but he's not an active player. Yeah, He's not playing anymore. Two balls, two strikes. Be nice to get that leadoff man on. Put a little pressure on their defense. Jason, in the last almost two weeks, doing great work against lefties. Ooh. Full count. A lot of Jason's damage is to left center and left field against the lefties. They're playing him to pull. High pop, shallow left center field. Martinez comes in and JD puts it away. Hayward's retired for out number one. Here's Chipper. Chippers walked twice, singled once, and has scored a run. Liner into center. Right at Maxwell. Two outs. Six straight Braves have been retired by the Astros staff. And here's Freddie Freeman with two outs. Too, with great work against lefties in the last month. Must be really hard to pick up in that he's got a good off speed pitch, which that was, and that's going to fool some hitters. But even with this fastball, it's kind of a crossfire fastball that's hard to see like that. 
And Wesley Wright carves through the Atlanta heart of the order in 1-2-3 fashion. We head to the ninth. Houston still leads by a run. for tonight's Toyota play of the game and then actually came way back in the first inning runner at first and one out nice backhanded stop by triple right by the bag at third base and it's an around the horn double play good stop by chipper and a good turn by Ugla. and the Braves need another good inning of relief this time from Chad Durbin who answers the AT&T call Let's see if he can solve Justin Maxwell, who's done all the damage for Houston tonight. Three for three with two mammoth home runs to left. Just hold him right there. We'll see if Wesley Wright continues for Houston in inning number nine. <laughs> kind of hope he's, he's kind of hope they take him out. Exactly the way he's going. It's hard to be hard for them to take him out, but he's had a lot of work. Big night for Maxwell. Base hit past Freddie Freeman. He's four for four. What a night. He didn't really waste any time in any of the, any of the at bats. And with a shift on, he decided he'd go the other way. Four hits on eight pitches tonight. night for the Astros outfielder Justin Maxwell now J.D. Martinez hits Martinez doubled in between flyouts and ground outs he's one for three and two for seven in the series Keep an eye on Maxwell. He's already stolen a base tonight, too. That's three for the season. And a strike evens the count. at first and he just got back. Just barely. And 
went into that hand push into the bag a little early because it slowed him down. Braves have three outs left. They're down a run. And Houston this year, fellas, has lost five games when they've led after eight. So you do have hope. And they're only 10 and 20 in one run games. Shallow right. Hayward's coming on, makes the grab. Thought about throwing back to first. But Maxwell back in safely with one out. Some good flat out closing speed right here. It looked like that ball might actually sink in there for a hit. Jason wisely held on to the baseball, didn't have a play at first. It's fun watching your your reactions. Joe, the former outfielder, knew Hayward had it the whole time. Tom was just kind of throwing his hands up, like, oh, great, a blue pit. Yeah, I thought off the bat that was a blue, but he, Joe's right, he closed on that ball in a hurry. Here's Matt Downs. Downs had a bunt single in the seventh. That was erased on a Snyder double play ball. Getting close to first. Well, the scouting report must be that he doesn't bunt because even though he bunted earlier and got a base hit, Chipper's still not believing him. That one will fall in front of Hayward in right field. And Maxwell stops at second. First and second, one away. Here's the catcher, Chris Snyder. Ground ball would be nice. Real nice. Whoop. Up and in, ball one. For the Astros, that's a big run at second base. They can get him around. As you have said, Chip, the bullpen not very good at protecting leads. And it'd feel a little safer if they had a two run lead. Looks like Wesley Wright's not going to pitch the ninth inning. It's Wilton Lopez loosening. The Braves have Brian McCann leading off the ninth. They might leave Wesley in to pitch to him. Ground ball, shortstop. Second for one. Double play ends the inning. That's why a ground ball would be nice. Houston's hit to three double plays. The Braves need one to tie, two to win in the bottom of the ninth inning.
indeed Brian McCann will lead things off and Wesley Wright is out on the mound for the Astros still. McCann faced him last night hit into a double play. But it was a 4-6-3 double play and if they put that shift on for him it might be a base hit by the time they get to the ground ball. Always good to get that leadoff man on. And you trail by one in the ninth. McCann has walked twice, struck out once. Now Houston will shift. They'll have three defenders on the right side of the diamond. Marwin Gonzalez joins Altuve. And Brett Wallace, who's right on top of the first base line. And a called strike. Looking for something other than a fastball, the first two. Mm -hmm. It count two balls, two strikes. Ugla, Yanish, and then the pitcher spot will follow. He struck out Freddie Freeman on to end the eighth inning. It's not a fastball, it's more like a cutter because it's not his big sweeping slider. Yeah, it's like it just takes a little bit off velocity wise, and it's, yeah, like a, a little cutter, shortens the slider into a little bit of a cutter. That guy's having a great year, and he is anchoring this Houston bullpen. He gets Brian McCann, two outs in the ninth. Braves trail by one. Relief with two strikeouts as he's helped protect this Houston lead to this point. Base is empty with one out as Wilton Lopez is on to try to finish things up. Something, fellas, he has had very little success at doing. 
one for 11 in his career and save opportunities. Had some elbow trouble to put him on the DL between June 11th and July 8th. But he's a guy who throws strikes. The lowest walks per nine inning ratio among any major league reliever. You have to earn your way on against this guy. Let's see if Ugla can do that. And a two run scoring single in the sixth tied this game 2-2. Home run cut. Strike one. Called strike, it's 0 2. Juan Francisco waits on deck. on a one two count. Wow. You could hear it all the way up here. I'm not sure where it got him. Pretty obvious though. Jersey. Take that. Especially in that count. <laughs> not sure why he's even messing around in there. How about a walk off homer? That'd be all right. Juan's been swinging it of late. That's his season tally. He's four for his last six on the homestand. Two homers, eight RBIs in his last nine games. And he wails away, strike one. Four pinch hits for Francisco. One of them left the ballpark. Outfield very deep. Pop fly slicing toward the Houston dugout. It's nothing and two. Had a good cut at the first one. A little bit late on the last one. Slow roller towards short. Gonzalez to Altuve. And the throw to first is in time. A double play. And the Astros have beaten the Braves tonight by a final score of three to two. The Astros snap their four game losing streak and pick up their first win on the road since July 16th when they beat San Diego by a two nothing final score. Three to your final. We await the outcome of the Marlins and the Nationals. We're back to Turner Field in a moment.